Favorite. What's that? Highly favorite. Highly favorite. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome to um, our evening adult class. And we are going to continue our study of the book of Acts. And on Friday morning during Sunday school, we um, got into, I, I think we got towards the middle of this chapter. So we will um, share a few things that we talked about and then we will read the remainder of, of this book. Uh, of this chapter, rather, and then we're going to um, chapter number 16 in a time permit. So on Sunday, on Sunday, our emphasis was, uh, what, what happened? Your shadow. Okay, yeah. let me move it over there. <laughs> Let's see, so I won't have to block it. There you go. So on Sunday morning, our main emphasis was uh, the fact that when God brought us from under the law, he didn't want us to go back to um, the baggerly elements that came with the law. Um, it was a yoke that came with the law, a burden that came with the law. And one of the things that they shared when they were regarding the um, Gentile believers, um, they were sharing with them the fact, and we had just read it, verse number 10, was the thrust of what we talked about on um, this past Sunday. But verse number 10, he says, Now therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Uh, so we um, pretty much lingered there. And also we looked at a, 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 a book from the gospel. I'm going to need some help from the class. What book of the gospel did we look at and what chapter did we look at? Those who were here Sunday, those who were here Sunday, I'm going to let y'all look at y'all notes as well. I uh, hope, hope you take notes when you come to class, when you come to class, hope it. As one professor said, um, a short pencil is better than a long memory uh, because your long memory will fail you, but if you write something down with a short pencil, um, it will remain there. But what was the book we looked at from the gospel? Matthew. And, yeah, Matthew mm -hmm. chapter. Um, no, no. What chapter y'all got wrote down? Eight. Uh-uh. Huh? <laughs> Remember we went over, I'm going to see if anybody else will help you help before us. we go over there. <laughs> but it was the same type of language. It was the same language when he was talking about, uh, you know, you guys go see and land to win one proselyte. And then he was saying, when you win them, you make them ch twice a child of hell than you are. Um, Y'all remember us discussing that? So, yeah, 23. 23. Um, chapter number 23. <laughs> Uh, when he was talking about that. So I won't go over there. I'll let you read that um, on your own. But we kind of lingered there, and we was just talking about um, how when Jesus, one of the things that Jesus said when he came, and I will go over there because I was saying this is our mantra at the Hartsfield Church of Christ. Jesus said, come to me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Um, so we, we spent some time there showing that, you know, Jesus came to lighten our burden. We didn't get a chance to go to this verse. So I'll open up uh, with this verse. Because we did go over to Galatians, but we didn't get to chapter number six. My intention was to read this. But um, the Bible starts off in verse number six by saying, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, we are familiar with this one. You who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. And then look what verse number two tells us. Bear one another's burdens mm -hmm. 
so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. And then verse number five, he says, for each one shall bear his own load. And I think I did a lesson on this before, but um, in verse number two and verse number five, um, the Greek words are a little different here. Uh, when we look at verse number two, the burden here is more so of a suitcase, if you will. It's a large cargo item, if you will. But then when you look at the Greek word in verse number five, it's more of a knapsack or a backpack. So when he tells us to bear our own burden, this is something that all of us have attached to us. All of us have some burden that comes with life and just come with walking this Christian life. But um, he was showing us in this text also that life will get burdensome where uh, sometimes you will need some help from your fellow man, from your fellow brother. And the Bible is saying it's okay for us to help each other with um, these burdens, um, you know, sometimes when, when they really get heavy in this life. So let's go back over to Acts chapter number 15, and we'll uh, commence our reading where we left off. Uh, go ahead, Sister Anderson. Where in 23 did we, where in 23 and Matthew did we read from? Where did we read from? I, I think we began at the beginning. Let's let's just go back quickly. Um, it's like 11. Yeah, I think we, we started we started at verse number one showing that the Pharisees and scribes sat in Moses' seat. And we read verse number one and I think we oh, concluded. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, so let me see. If Thirteen I can. is the one where it says hypocrites. Yeah. So <laughs> let's go back over to Matthew the fifteenth chapter because I want to um, finish reading where we left off in okay. chapter number fifteen. Acts. Thank you. Acts chapter number fifteen, and um, I think we around verse number twenty. This Bible app don't have the columns like I want it, but nonetheless, we'll pick up here. But we understand in the beginning of this chapter, the apostles went to Jerusalem to uh, counsel with those who were more mature in the faith, those who um, obeyed the gospel earlier, those who now held positions in the church. And one of the reasons that they went there was to show um, that the Gentiles were one to the faith, but also they experienced the same Holy Spirit that they experienced just as in the beginning. But also, um, Peter had already told them about his experience that Jesus said what he had made clean don't count as unclean anymore. So when they went to the council, if you will, or the church down in Jerusalem, they went to show that it was some from the, you know, the Judea, Ju Judaizer sect was trying to bind circumcision on Gentile believers. And they were saying that, you know, this isn't biblical. This isn't right. We are free under grace, we are free under this testament. Uh, circumcision was of uh, the first covenant. That was a uh, Abrahamic um, covenant. So we're no longer bind or we're no, no longer bound to that covenant. So we're going to pick up um, on the discussion that took place, and I think this is James talking here. But let's let's begin reading at verse number 18. It says, Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Verse number 19, he says, Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them 
which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time has in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath, Sabbath day. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. So this is what came out of the council. So they say we're going to send chosen men back to Antioch so we can clear up this misconception about the Gentile believers have to be circumcised. Um, so it says Judas, they sent Judas surname Barsabbas and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. This is the letter that they sent with them to accompany them when they went back to Antioch. Um, the apostles and elders and brethren send greetings unto, unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your souls, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment, right? So they reminded them that these people who crap in and said, no, you can't just be a Christian. You can't just be under grace. You got to keep the law and you got to be circumcised. So they wrote this letter and said, we never gave you this commandment. We seasoned brothers. We are apostles. We are chief men we are seasoned in the faith right we never because y'all got to understand that those who believe were following the pattern that the mature christians set for them y'all know y'all know christianity is a word of mouth faith uh, we talked about it i think in the teacher's workshop that you know we allow the world to hijack biblical principles from us. It's each one teach one. And I said in the teacher's workshop, if all of us just focus on one person for the year, the church would double every year just from us focusing on one person. But y'all know that Christianity is a word of mouth faith. It don't just come through divine osmosis. God's not showing up in dreams. God's not showing up as ghosts. How can they hear without somebody telling them? How can they hear without a preacher? God may, and, and, and we've been studying Acts, even, and this is the best example that comes to mind, even when God uh, cast Saul down on the Damascus road, he sent one to tell them what he needed to do in order to be saved. Who did he send, class? Ananias. Ananias. You mean to tell me God couldn't have told him what he needed to do to be saved? No, because it's a word. He used mankind, this earthen vessel. We, we, that's why it's important for us to be the church because, you know, a lot rests on the church. Remember um, Sunday we talked about, was it Sunday or last Wednesday? We talked about, last Wednesday we talked about in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, uh, God is reconciling the world through us. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So it's a lot on the line. It's a lot on the line. That's why it's imperative that we be Christians. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, people's salvation is on the line. We are the light of the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do men light a candle and put a shade on it? Right. No. <laughs> no, you put it where everybody can see. Mm -hmm. And then it says that, you know, we are like a light on a hill, a beacon of light, right? Mm -hmm. But Christianity is spread through us telling folks. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know... <laughs> I know we, we, you know, sometimes we say, well, you know, we supposed to just live a Christian life. Yeah, we do supposed to just live a Christian life. But at the end of the day, 
our deeds need to line up with our words. Amen. We can't just tell people and don't live it. You know, our, our words need to line up. Well, our words need to line up with our walk at the end of the day. But we still got to put some words to our walk. Amen. Oh, God, I'm, I need to linger here for a minute. I need to linger here for a minute because sometimes we adopt this mentality. Well, as long as I just live right, people going to know about Jesus. <laughs> No, that might be an interest for you to tell people about Jesus. But until we tell somebody about Jesus, they ain't going to know. Amen. Uh, let me revisit that again. Let me revisit that again. Amen. I know we like to think, well, you know, they just know I'm a Christian. And I, they should know I'm going to church every Wednesday. It's a lot of people leave at, 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 at around the time we leave and go somewhere else. <laughs> People go to school meetings, board meetings. They go to support their kids and little leagues. So just because you leave around 6 p.m. on Wednesday, people don't necessarily know that you're going to church. Amen. And I ain't just talking to y'all. I'm talking to myself as well. Amen. Amen. Because sometimes we just think, you know, people just know, no, it's a word of mouth thing. We got to tell them. We got to tell them. If, if we don't tell them, they not going to know. They not going to know. Uh, go ahead, Sister McCutcheon. You know, you say word of mouth, and if we who know don't talk, somebody's talking. The mercy. One who don't know mercy. Is talking. Lord have but mercy. They're trying to make other people think they know, and they acting like they know, and they might, as far as they know, they might know what they know, but what they know is not God, the Word of God. Yeah. So if we know the Word of God, we need to talk. Mercy. We need to talk every time. I mean. I've heard people say, every time you see you coming, you got a Bible in your hand or whatever. What else are you going to talk about? Right. Christ is our Savior. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you get tired of hearing about God, that's, that's on you. I'm not tired. The thing is, um, I, I think you're saying something because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, people are spreading something. Jesus said it this way. He said, in to whom much is given, much is required. And I know oftentimes we equate that to material things, but he would study that in this context. He said, freely you have received, freely you give. He was talking about the understanding. If you grasp the truth and you've been delivered from Satan's captivity, he says, and to him whom much is given, much is required. It's a lot of, on the line. I know I know. We, we often talk about material things, and we say, well, you know, uh, what's the word we, the, the verse we get caught up in? And we think that's just about material things. Um, freely you have been given, freely you receive. Uh, what's some of the other passages? Um, I can't think of them right now. But if you study some of those verses in this context, he was talking about the word of God, the truth, the value of the truth. So just like you were enriched from the truth and we're talking about burdens, I thank God he set me free. I thank God he set me free because at the end of the day, if you weren't set free, you're still vulnerable to the bonds of Satan. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. I, and I don't want to go down this road because we'll be here for the rest of the night. But at the end of the day, when you searching for truth, it's easy to get entangled in a lot of mistruth. Amen. When you searching for truth, and we study in Acts, it was a lot of religious people. Right? We studied over in Acts the eighth chapter. Simon bewitched the whole city. <laughs> And, and then when they showed up teaching the truth, that's when people gravitated to the truth. But, but, but while they were seeking, they were clinging to things that looked like the truth, but it was a counterfeit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now that we know the truth, we sing the songs, I once was blind, mm -hmm. now I see. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for us to go get some other blind folks. Amen. That's why Jesus said if the blind lead the blind, they're going to both fall in this. But if you see, it's only right for you to go get somebody who still in the darkness and bring them to the light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where well, they find it, I found it on my own. You ain't find it on. Okay, I'm gonna get. Let me get a litmus test. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. I'm gonna read. I ain't saying nothing else for tonight. But on the on, on the real, 
Who learned the gospel without somebody telling them? I want to hit, see the hand. I, would, I just want to see this. All of us was taught by somebody. Amen. Somebody introduced all of us to the faith. Amen. So if somebody introduced all of us, how are we just going to pray and people just going to fall into this building and everybody just going to be saved? No, that ain't how it works. Matter of fact, the Bible never said uh, pray and, you know, that people will come to church. The Great Commission said go. That's right. That's it. Go. Right? <laughs> Matter of fact, our worship assemblies are, um, you know, for it's, it's friendly for people who don't have a covenant with God. But the main objective for us assembling is for those who have a covenant with God. Oh, I know I'm telling the truth. Because y'all know when y'all invite y'all friends and family, y'all, y'all, some of y'all don't want some more. Y'all, you, you come to our church because we don't take up five offerings. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You know, <laughs> we, we, you don't have to give. We'll tell people that. Come on, y'all. Because really in our mind, subconsciously, we saying, okay, you really not a member, so you're not obligated to give. Right? But as believers, we obligated to give back unto the Lord. Amen. As believers, we are commanded to take the Lord's Supper as covenant believers. As covenant believers, we are, we, we are commanded to sing songs, spiritual songs. We commanded to pray. We commanded to be built up by the word of God. We commanded. Now, anybody could come in our assembly, you know. But it's some things that they won't fully benefit from until they have a covenant relationship with God. Well, how do they get to that point? We, we got to go out and get them. Right? And, and, and I'm going to leave y'all alone. But a lot of it start before they even come to the assembly. That's why in the Great Commission, he said, go teaching them baptizing them, and teach them some more. Yeah. But the teaching start before baptism. Amen. All right, I'm, I'm getting off of it. But he says, he says, we didn't, we didn't command you to, of this, right? And then verse number 25, he says, it seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have, 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 somebody say that for me. Hazard. 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 Hazard it. Hazard it. <laughs> their lives. Risk their lives. Amen. Risk their lives at the end of the day. Amen. <laughs> what you say? Uh, says that's... Risk the Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who risked their lives for the name of our Lord and Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth, for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden. Once again, they're talking about that burden again. Then these necessary things that ye abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication and from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. So verse number 30 says, so when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch. And when they had gathered the multitudes together, they delivered the epistle, which when they had read, listen to this, y'all, they rejoiced for consolation, right? Amen. Why they rejoice? Why, why would they rejoice? Because they, they, they heard the word. Because it was freedom. It was, it was like, it was away from the old law. Amen. But, but, now men may only can identify with this. Everybody who was converted wasn't kids. They weren't newborns. So imagine you, y'all know, this is biblical. You a grown man and they say, okay, you a Christian. You got to get circumcised. Grown men don't want to hear that. I, come on, men. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> well, a lot of us already been. <laughs> <laughs> we talking about in this day and time. We talking about in this day and time. But under the under in their damn time, that was a Jewish, that was an Abrahamic covenant. 
where on the eighth day, if you was born in the bloodline of Abraham, that was it something that they did. But Gentiles, that wasn't commanded for them. So Gentiles, you can be grown and never been circumcised because ultimately it wasn't a san We do it for sanitary reasons in this day. But on the, it was a covenant between God and Abraham, right? So Gentiles, you could have been grown your whole life. So when they came back with that report, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lord have mercy. So um, verse number 32, we're going to pick up. And Judas and Silas, now I, 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 wanna, I want us to see how it transitioned. Let me make sure this is the right verse where it transitioned. Because now we're about to see um, the apostle, especially the apostle Paul, getting ready to embark on what we know as the second missionary journey. The second missionary journey. Um, the first missionary journey took place about how many years after Pentecost? <laughs> Come on, class. Y'all can't be leaving me out here by myself. You told us that. You told us that. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you in the, you in the right neighborhood, um, Sister Anderson. So I'm gonna just give it to y'all again. Y'all better write this stuff down in y'all notes. But, but, uh so we we understand that Pentecost took place, AD 33. So there was a 14 year period. Where, remember, Jesus told the early church in Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. What did he tell them, y'all? I know y'all know that one. Acts started, chapter 1, started, verse, yeah. Oh, okay. Come on. Started Judea. Starting Jerusalem. 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 Mm -hmm. Samaria. Judea. Samaria. Judea. Parts. Samaria. <laughs> the outermost parts of the earth. Mm -hmm. So, Primarily, this started off with them going to preach to the Jews. Mm -hmm. We see um, Peter talk to the first Gentile converts in the household of Cornelius in Acts the 10th chapter. But we know that that wasn't Peter's primary focus. Paul's primary focus was to the Gentile world, right? Mm -hmm. So, there was a 14-year period from around Acts the 8th chapter to Acts the 12th chapter. And then Acts the 13th chapter, we find from Acts the 13th chapter to where we're at right now, there um, we'll find, well, let me say from, yeah, Acts the 13th chapter to where we're at now, we find the first missionary journey where Paul embarked on the first missionary journey. So, there's a 14-year period to the first missionary journey. Mm -hmm. And then from Acts, the 13th chapter, to the 15th chapter, there's the first missionary journey. And then from the, the end of Acts, chapter 15, until the 18th chapter, we're going to be looking at what we know as the second missionary journey. Okay, so between the first... Well, I'm gonna have to do a guesstimation because from well, let me let me let me let me tell you why I'm saying this because from Acts the 13th chapter to the 28th chapter is a 14 year period. So you know, as we study in the book of Acts, some of it is not given in a chronological order. We know it from looking at other epistles like the book of Galatians when that was written, when Ephesians was written, mm -hmm. and you could kind of get a timeline from yeah. putting them all together. But as we've been studying Acts, you can see that it's been a swift transition. Mm -hmm. Stuff been happening. This ain't been like the next day, right? <laughs> this has been years and, you know, months have went past. But what we're reading at the latter part of chapter number 15, we're seeing where the first... I mean, the second, the first missionary journey is coming to a close. Okay. 
and they're getting ready to embark on the second missionary journey. So let, let me just read this, and then I want to show the point of me bringing this PowerPoint, not just for the scriptures, because all of us have Bibles. We don't need the PowerPoint for the Bible, because everybody got a Bible. Who all got a red Bible? I don't know. Who all got a red Bible? I'm holding it. Amen. Three people got a red Bible. All of us should have a red Bible. Me and you read your Bible. Y'all ain't saying that. I thought y'all know that one. Come on, y'all. That's an old one right there. <laughs> That's an old one right there. <laughs> Oh, that's an old one that you, you read your Bible. <laughs> but we're going to look at... But we're going to look at the map and just kind of uh, follow along and see um, some of this second missionary journey. But let's begin at verse number three. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch. And when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets, also themselves exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. And after they had tarried there a space, there were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas to abide there still. Silas wanted to stay there, right? <coughs> Verse number 35 says, Paul also and Barnabas continue in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark, but Paul thought not good to take him with them who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the word. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus, Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed being recognized recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God and he went through Syria and yeah that Greek word right there <laughs> confirming the churches now who was John Mark John Mark uh, anybody just we're not going to dwell there I just want to point this out as we get ready to it's Mark, but who 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 is he? Uh, you got well. Do you know a little bit about his background? I should say. Uh, you said it, Mark. If you say it's Mark, which Mark is it? Sister Alice. The Mark. The, Mark the, the, that wrote, the, wrote the, the, the book. Amen. Amen. Yeah, the one who wrote um, the uh, you know the gospel mm -hmm. according to Mark. This is the Mark who wrote. The gospel according to Mark, but his name is John. He's also the cousin of Barnabas. Mm -hmm. He's the cousin of Barnabas. Um, so we're going to see Barnabas and him went one direction, and Paul and Silas went another direction. Now, when we think about them going their separate ways, did Paul have a point well, about his decision? Yeah, because he wanted somebody who was going to have his back. <laughs> he would come to some trouble and stuff. So, yeah, so he, I guess he had a point. Okay, okay. You know, because if he ran one guy, Mercy. Paul probably going to run again. Right. Mercy. Anybody got a different viewpoint when it comes to that? He just needed somebody that he could depend on. Okay. Same thing, but. All right. He, 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 they said he, the Bible said. He left them. Mercy. He, Without he the work being done. Right. He just cut out on them. Right. What about forgiveness? Where forgiveness uh, come in there? Well, it was promised. <laughs> 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 but you know what? Mercy. Mercy. I All right, let's hear from the wise one over here, Brother Bud. He looked like he just got something wise to say. Go ahead, Brother Bud. You know, I think the same thing is happening today. We got brothers. And then a brother may go back into the world. I'm kind of thinking that he went back into the world 
and, and Paul just didn't trust him anymore. And so usually in today's time we have a brother and sister, and we try to restore them, go back in the world, but people still talk about it, still talk about you, you know. Well, you were a Christian, you went back in the world, now you're back in the church, and we're not to look at you as that you work, or you know, you might slip up again. Mercy. <laughs> Mercy. Uh, Brother Bun. Anybody got anything to add to Brother Bun? Say, <laughs> Brother Bun just took a whole nother spin on, on it. But later on in the life, that what Bun talking about, where he took it and, and, and came where you say, forgive as I have that's where Paul came back and accepted him. Mm -hmm. It could have been that, but he did accept him later, later on. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. And he could, Mark could have been just like you say, Paul wanted somebody to have his back. It doesn't really say why Mark, he didn't take Mark, just that he didn't take Mark. No, he, it, it said that he departed on that other mission. Mm -hmm. On the other mission. Let's he, see. Yeah, he fell out of it. I mean, but, the, but Paul also around. said that if, if your brother is weak, you ought to over, you know, bring him up, strengthen. strengthen him with love in a loving, kind way. You know, he said that too. Yeah. But I guess he forgot that. He said the contention <laughs> was sharp. <laughs> you know, but he, he <laughs> came into it on himself. He came into it. Well, he was human. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, go ahead, Sister Button. Let me see if I can look up Pamphylia real quick. Amen. And I, I think we spent some time on that last Wednesday where, you know, Paul, some of his last words was send John Mark. Send Mark. He was the last yeah. person that he requests. He said, everybody else don't forsook me. Yeah. Only Luke is with me. He said, send John Mark. Mm -hmm. You know, um, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I was, I mean, we had to, Paul was human. He, he wasn't Jesus. So even if he had words through his life of where he would say, do this and do that. You know, he had to learn it. Yeah, he had to go through yeah. experiences mm -hmm. to to be able to write the words of wisdom. Amen. Okay. Amen. So, <laughs> so one of the things I want to observe <laughs> as well is the fact that even though Paul didn't take on Mark, wasn't out of commission. No, because him and Barnabas still continued to work, but they covered some other ground that Paul and Silas didn't cover. And you know, I you know, unfortunately. Unfortunately, we know churches that have split, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And we know that some, you know, both of them end up thriving later. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, and I, I, I like to think, I like to think, I like to think this, you know, that we can overcome just about any problem that arises in the church. That's the way I like to think. But the Bible already told us that if it's possible, be at peace. Be at peace with all men. Sometimes, you know, people are just stuck on themselves. It ain't really about doing the work of the Lord. It's my way or the highway. It's my, if you don't see it exactly the way I see it, I'm not bending, I'm not budging. You know, and a matter of fact, most theologians and most preachers will tell you most of the splits that you find in churches I'm talking about the most Church of Christ ain't doctrinal splits. <laughs> it's opinions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to do it this way. <laughs> what color the carpet for to be? <laughs> I thought we agreed on blue. You talking about green? No, we ain't spending no money on green. And I'm telling you. What time we for the meet? We for the meet at? No, you talking about changing and real? Uh, uh. We supposed to take the communion before offering. I ain't coming back. <laughs> I ain't coming back. That ain't the emphasis. That ain't even the emphasis. <laughs> and, and people fall out yeah. over stuff that's not even doctrinal. 
Ah, uh, brother Bud. You know, it, 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 here's the point too. I'm trying to add to it. We could have, we could disagree on this today. And one of the best ways to solve our problems is agreeing. Uh, is um, is solving our problem by agreeing in the, in the in the beginning that we're gonna disagree on some stuff. So we already know that. So we don't solve the problem before it happens. We can disagree about this. Let's agree to that and God help it. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, because at the end of the day, we all learn. We all on this journey together. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, we got to stay teachable as well. Yeah. Amen. And Amen. also, we can't major in the minors and minor in the majors. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Major in the minors and minor in the majors. Oh, I know I'm preaching right now. I ain't even preaching, but I'm preaching. You know, uh, sometimes we won't bend, and it's just, we can, it don't matter. <laughs> but I ain't, I ain't changing on that. We gonna fight about that. And then if it's something that's, you know, Jesus don't told us to do, we don't put as much emphasis, and we won't fight tooth and nail about something we know Jesus said to do. Mercy. Y'all ain't going to help me Mercy. up in here. <laughs> we won't fight too for now about that. Well, that's okay. And you know we got to grow. But then there's something that ain't no salvation attached. We'll tear the whole church up behind that. Oh, God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and I thank God. And y'all probably heard this before. It's two ministries in the church that will tear a church up. That kitchen ministry in the choir wow. would tear a church in two. Y'all, y'all seen how when I brought up that chicken, y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, wow. Boy, we could talk about another thirty minutes about that chicken. Y'all ain't gonna help me up here. It's the truth of the matter. Uh, I'm, see, y'all, some y'all sore now. I don't brought up chicken again, but. Ain't no salvation in that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, things that's dealing with salvation, that's what God wants us to have a firm grip on. Right. Right. Amen. Okay. That's why they went down to Jerusalem. They said, no, we got to talk about this circumcision thing because this is dealing with doctrine. When somebody come in and they become a Christian, are we going to tell everybody that they have to be circumcised? Because this do with doctrine. We need to have an understanding on this. We need to have a proper understanding on this. And, and that's why they assembled the apostles, the elders, the brethren, and all the chief men. And they said, let's talk about this. Let's discuss this. And they came to an agreement. And then they sent the letter to Antioch so they could be clear on doctrine. Right? Amen. But some of the stuff that don't have nothing to do with doctrine, we ain't going to spend a whole lot of time on that. So let me, let me look at this real quick. Let me see if I can look at this and make some t sense of it. Um, Sister Anderson, she brought up the fact that Pamphylia was mentioned before, and you can find Pamphylia in... Acts chapter number 13, verse number 13, and this is one of the places that Paul went on the first missionary journey. Let me see if this is the first missionary journey I'm looking at or the second one. I downloaded a few maps. Um, okay, here's the first one. So the first missionary journey, um, this is, I'm going to try to see where it started. Let me see, where did it start? I, I might have to go back to find out exactly which city they started in with the first missionary journey. Antioch. Antioch? Okay, Antioch. Okay, it looked like Antioch. So, which, which, which one? The red one. The blue one. The blue one first? Yeah, so go to the, go to the bottom for the legend. I think the, the, the blue arrow is Paul. The blue arrow, okay. You see the legend at the bottom? The blue is Paul. Paul. Okay, so it's that. The blue one going is 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but on the other one, because the second one did have uh, a red pole. Okay, I, I think I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it, Sister Anderson. Okay. So the blue one, we found the blue one. Because if you go back to um Acts chapter number 13, you'll see where verse number one, it talks about them being an Antioch. And then you'll find in verse number five, where you'll find where they went to Salamis. How you, how you pronounce that? Okay. So they went to Antioch, Seleucia, Peria, uh, Salamis, Cyprus, Paphos. And this is the route that they went. And you can see up here in the corner that they went to Lystra. Um, they went to Iconium. They went to Derby. So Lystra is the city where Paul first came in contact with Timothy. Because in chapter number 16, we're about to find where when he come through, you know, he's now traveling with Silas. He's no longer traveling with Barnabas. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning of chapter number 16, he come back in contact with Timothy, and he bring Timothy with him. Mm -hmm. Timothy is not a new convert at this time because he obviously was converted when Saul initially went through um, Lystra. So we, we don't have a lot of time to study the map, but I do I did want to just show, I, do, I want to show that the map kind of show you um, how the territory was expanded. So in chapter number, chapter number 15, at the end of chapter number 15, um, let me see where we left off at. I wanted, yeah, in Antioch. So when they leave Antioch, they're going to go to Tarsus, Derby. They're going to go back to Lystra. What happened at Lystra, y'all? This is something monumental that should stand out. Dramatic, I should say. Yeah, that's where, that's where Paul got beat, and they left him for dead. Yeah, yeah they stoned him. Uh, so they're going to go back through that city. You heard what he told Barnabas. He said, let's go back and check on the churches that we have already planted, the disciples. And Paul, that's, that's a good leader right there. He's not consumed with himself. He's trusting God. He said, I'm worried about the believers, right? The babes in Christ. I want to strengthen their faith. I want to make sure they're rooted and grounded in the truth. He, he put some skin in the game, right? He, he wasn't worried about himself. He said, let's go back. And then we see that he go into, and we, we'll bring this map back up, and we'll, we'll try to follow the map as we read so we can kind of see what cities that he's in. Uh, we studied this at the Butler Center this morning. Um, let me see if I can get it real quick. So in this area, Paul initially... When he was leaving um, um, Antioch, he wanted to go north to Bethania. But the Holy Spirit, God blocked it so he didn't go to Bethania. And God told him to go to Troas. And then when he went to Troas, he crossed over. He, he stopped at uh, Somatras. And then he got over to Philippi. Neapolis, and all these cities, but this is where he run into Lydia. Right. Okay. This is where, this is the area where he encountered Lydia when the women were at the river praying, and he went down there, and he began to speak to them. So this is the area, but Lydia, she was over here selling purple right. <laughs> on this side, but she was from over here in Thyatira. But she crossed over. She said, it's money over here across sea. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> she said, I'm going over here and sell some purple. And, and y'all remember, well, we ain't got time to get into all that because I, I want to show y'all something. I want to show y'all um, a video uh, real quick. I want to show y'all a video real quick. And I want to share a few other things and then we'll be on that way. I think the house is covered. The house is covered. I think uh, we all love the faith um, on tonight. Um, but if there's a re prayer request, we want to definitely write it down. We want to write it down. Um, any prayer requests on tonight, 
Any prayer requests on tonight? Uh, go ahead, Alicia, and you can you can cut that off. Okay. Okay. Um, continued prayers for our neighbor that we discussed on Sunday that lives across from us in Florida. Um, his wife was watching tonight, and she asked that we continue to pray for them. So. Amen. 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 Amen.